Migration to the latest Zabbix version. Something that maybe you're a bit afraid to do, are not sure what the best practices are, and maybe you just need some extra advice before doing so. So our next speaker is going to teach you just how to do that, how to migrate to Zabbix 6.0. Let's welcome fellow support engineer from Zabbix, Edgar Melveris. Thank you, Arthurs. So I will be telling you today about how to approach upgrading to the latest uh, 6.0 long-term support release of Zabbix, mainly focusing from upgrading from version 5.0, but also some notes about 4.0. So first thing you want to do before the upgrade, uh, you want to check if everything in your infrastructure is ready for an upgrade. So there are some changes here in Zabbix that you will definitely want to uh, address before the upgrade. So one of the most important ones being changes in supported databases. So we have increased uh, the versions of supported databases for all databases. So you should check carefully if your database is supported. If not, uh, we definitely recommend you to upgrade to a support database version before uh, upgrading Zabbix. Because in version 6, uh, Zabbix will not even start by default if the DB version is unsupported. So there is a configuration parameter where you can enable this, but at the same time, why we have made this change? Because we want to use the newer features these databases support, and some of those might just not work on the older one. So you can override and Zabbix will start with an older database, but this is not recommended. So MySQL per corner 8.0, MariaDB starting from 10.5, Postgres 13 and up, and Oracle starting from 19C. Okay, next thing. Also, we support basically all uh, Linux distributions and not only Linux, but we only provide packages for a certain uh, list of operating systems. So one of the major changes, which was actually done in version 5.2, is we no longer provide packages for Red Hat or CentOS uh, version 7. This is because some of the libraries are outdated and it becomes more and more complicated to actually build uh, Zabbix on it, at least with the provided uh, operating system libraries. But it is still possible to uh, do it yourself if you build from source and provide correct versions of the libraries. Okay, uh, maybe you might also consider other installation options with Zabbix. So you can use Docker. In that case, all of those operating system dependencies are done for you. So you just download the container and start using it. You could also use a cloud image or a Zabbix appliance. In addition, you should definitely do an environment review before upgrade. Okay, my personal opinion is that you should not do operating system upgrades and Zabbix upgrades at the same time. So I would recommend uh, initially doing all the operating system upgrades, checking if that introduces any problems or any uh, performance problems or whatever. And only then, if, if you're sure that everything works correctly, do Zabbix upgrade. Otherwise, if after a full upgrade something is wrong, it will be harder to figure out what's the cause for this. Okay, in addition, you probably should be aware of any customizations or modifications of Zabbix in your environment. So if you made any changes to database uh, or maybe even Zabbix source and so on. And if you have, uh, you should check if that will work with Zabbix 6, probably on a non-prod environment. Okay, next also check yeah, if you have those packages available. So maybe they are available for your Zabbix server front end but all your proxies on compatible operating system. So maybe there are some on CentOS 7 and you don't have packages for it, so you would either need to install newer version of the operating system or uh, compile the packages yourself. Also, there are some known issues, uh, as in all versions of Zabbix, with some specific library versions or whatever. So check documentation to see if there are any known issues that uh, affect your installation. Okay, next, additionally, before the upgrade, there are some changes that I would like to tell you about which could affect your upgrade or could affect your environment. First of all, API. Uh, there are links on the screen uh, for full documentation of all changes starting from 5.0, 5.2, 5.4, .5 and 6.0. Uh, you should definitely check those before doing an upgrade, but some of the most important ones. So, 
in other speeches we've already uh, covered trigger and calculated aggregated item uh, syntax changes. Okay, when you do the upgrade, the actual syntax will be upgraded automatically by Zabbix. But if you have some API integrations that create such items or triggers manually, then there you will also need to upgrade the syntax. Okay, a user uh, parameter of API no longer supports the user medias. They are renamed to medias.usermedias. So again, if you're using this, you might need to update your API scripts. In addition, there is no longer a type option for the user, uh, user object in Zabbix API because we now use user roles. So again, you might need to update here. Next, um, we've renamed applications to item tags. So again, items no longer can have applications, but they use item tags. Some changes needed there. And value maps are no longer global. Uh, so they require a host ID, which could be a template or a host. In addition, because we now have set up uh, user password complexity requirements, which can be set, uh, turned on, uh, we've also fixed one uh, thing which used to be in Zabbix, so that uh, when you input your password, when you change it or when you log in, it used to cut uh, uh, any spaces at the end of the password. So now it long, no longer does that. So if you had a space after the password, it might no longer work. You might need to update it. Next, what are the required uh, steps to actually do the upgrade? So the first thing you should definitely do is backup. So most importantly, backup the database. This is where all of your configuration uh, hosts and history is stored. After that, uh, back up any of your personal customizations like scripts, uh, external scripts, alert scripts, whatever. And also configuration files. Those can be recreated, of course, but it can take a while. Next, when you do the update, first you need to update the big server binary and the front end. Uh, when server uh, 6.0 binary will start and connect to the database, it will check current DB schema version. Uh, it will see that it's 5.0 and it will start an automatic DB schema upgrade, which can take a while depending on your database size. Okay, after the upgrade, it will start Zabbix 6.0 and will start working and that should be all. As a next step, you should also upgrade your proxies if you use any, because it's not supported to use a proxy of a different major version for Zabbix. And then check if everything works. If all data from all proxies are coming in, if triggers are firing where they should, and just a generic sanity check. Okay, so first of all, the backup. Let's go into a bit more details. How to do it and what part you should. So backup of the database is the first thing. Depending on your database type, methods differ, but uh, in this slide you can see one example of how to do it for MySQL. In addition, um, ignoring history and trends tables. So if you ever looked at Zobbix database, you'll notice that history and trends tables are the biggest ones, usually taking 90% or more of the disk space. So the backup itself can be really slow because of these tables. If you just skip them, uh, the backup will be much, much faster and it will contain all of your configurations. The most important thing to uh, restart work or uh, get back to online situation if the worst happens. But it also means that in this case, it will just completely ignore those history tables. So you might need to manually recreate them if you restore from this backup. Okay, next, yeah, configuration files of Zabbix and any alert scripts or any external scripts you have on the server. Okay, possibly also configuration of the front end, but that depends on if there's anything actually changed there. Okay, so some examples of how to do it with Docker. Okay, uh, there are multiple ways you can deploy Docker. Uh, I won't go into detail about all of them, but the simplest option, you are just running a Docker container. So you need to stop it, uh, both Zabbix server, Zabbix frontend, any proxies if you have, and then just start uh, version 6.0 container by connecting it to the same database. And the same thing will happen, it will start an automatic DB schema upgrade. Okay, so again, you do need to check your DB version before that, but it's as simple as this. 
and no fuss about supported operating systems, installed packages or anything else. It's all included in the container. Okay, but if you are using packages, uh, then the process is a little bit more complicated, but not too much. So the first thing you need to do, and this example I'm using uh, Red Hat or CentOS 8, you need to install the 6.0 Zabbix release package, which will provide your operating system with repository information of Zabbix repository uh, from where you can download our 6.0 packages. Okay, possibly clean any, any cache you have and then just one command to install. I'm using install because there is one new package here. Install all the required uh, packages. And that should be it. It should restart the service automatically, do the upgrade, and all you need to do is check the log file. In the log you will be able to see how far uh, has Zabbix completed the DB schema upgrade, and once it's done, it should just start Zabbix up. Okay, in addition, upgrade proxies. So the same thing, you need to install the repository package, clean cache if needed, and update Zabbix proxy depending on which version you've installed. If it is PostgreSQL or MySQL, the DB schema upgrade is done automatically, just like on the server. But if it is um, SQLite 3, no automatic DB schema upgrade, so you need to just remove the database file and Zabbix will just recreate it according to 6.0 schema. Okay, and that should be all. You should be running Zabbix 6.0. So after the upgrade, there are additional things you should take care of. Okay, so in version 6.0, uh, we have changed the DB schema of history tables. So they now contain primary keys. Because of performance and additional problems we foresee, this is not done automatically during the upgrade. And we actually don't recommend uh, doing it simply by trying to make the DB scheme change uh, alter table. So the changes there, uh, they will be very slow, in, again, depending on the size of the tables. And in addition, uh, we no longer allow duplicates because of primary keys. So if there are any duplicates, it might fail. So it's a big question if you should do this. In theory, it should decrease storage size and increase performance. But again, for new installations, it will be there by default. For older ones, you need to consider if and how you might want to uh, enable this. Next, there are some new processes. So in version 6, calculated, aggregated, and internal items are now done by uh, so-called history polars. If you have a lot of such items, you might need to check the default value of history polars is 5. So if you start uh, with an older configuration files coming from Zabbix 5 or 4, it will start the default 5 uh, processes. And it might not be enough. If you know you have a lot, you might already want to set it up and start more. Or you might want to check uh, your internal stats after the upgrade. In addition, if coming from version 4, there are also so-called LLD processors, which are now doing all low-level discoveries. So the same rule applies here. You need to check if there are enough LLD workers started and increase if needed. In addition, by default, after the upgrade, you will not see these new processes in your internal uh, monitoring in Zabbix. This is because during the upgrade, we do not touch the templates. So we don't know if you made any change to the default templates. That's why we don't touch them. So after upgrade, Definitely for Zabbix internal uh, stats like App Zabbix server, App Zabbix proxies, probably also for other templates you're using, you might want to update them manually. So there's a link here you can download the newest templates from. Just download, import them, and then you should see all stats for new processes and everything else that's reconfigured in those templates. By the way, there is a recent blog post in Zabbix uh, blog page exactly how to do that, so you can check that if you want to. So you might also want to think about upgrading the agents. Uh, this is not uh, mandatory, so agents are backwards compatible. You can work with the old version of the agent and newer server. Everything that used to work here will continue to work, but the newer agent might have some bug fixes, or, and most importantly, it has new features which you might want to start using. Okay, after the upgrade, in addition, there are some new packages provided by us, mostly repackaging of something. So what are they? If you're using SE Linux, you can install SE Linux policy package, 
if SC Linux is disabled, then you don't need it. Uh, you might be surprised that after installing of Zabbix proxy or Zabbix server, you will not find the uh, DB schema uh, scripts. Uh, we've removed those from the server packages because in many situations the DB is anyway on a separate server, so there is now a new package, Zabbix SQL scripts, which you can install only on, well, maybe the DB server or wherever you actually need those DB schema files. And uh, for the new reporting uh, feature, there is a package called Zabbix Web Service. Uh, this is for scheduled report generation, which uh, was introduced in version 5.4 of Zabbix. And for it to work, you will also need to install Google Chrome, but it's a requirement. So this should be all you need to do to upgrade to version 6 LTS of Zabbix. Thanks for listening, and I'm ready for questions. Uh, thank you a lot, Gris, for the great presentation. So, a couple of questions about the migration process. So, first off, uh, a question about custom templates. So, if a user has a bunch of custom templates and he performs the upgrade to 6.0, uh, what's going to happen with those templates? Are they still going to work? Are there any caveats with that? So, in simple terms, yes, they will continue to work. All the changes that are done uh, in trigger and calculate and aggregate item syntax they are also updated in the database, so that part we take care of and they should just continue to work exactly like they did. Mm -hmm. So the syntax update is automatic, okay. Um, great, next up, uh, a really common question that you've maybe heard before, but how long will the migration take? Uh, how can I estimate the downtime? It's basically impossible to estimate this. Okay, the best way might be to create a production database, backup, restore it somewhere, and try to run a test upgrade. But it all depends on size of the database, uh, how many specific things there are in specific tables where we make changes. So one of the major change in this version is uh, update of the same triggers and calculate them. So basically update of table functions. Okay, so database speed, size of the database, it all affects it, but it's, it's not simple to make any presumptions about this. So essentially making a count on the functions table, in, in this case, if you're upgrading from 5.0 to 6.0, that should somewhat like give you, give you the, the picture of how long it's going to take, at least generally. Very generally, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, somewhat over a lay question, the last one. Um, what about migrating from a really old version, for example, 3.0 or, or maybe even older? Um, any caveats? Will that work? In theory, it will work, but on each of the versions, there might be different issues you might run into. Uh, some optimizations you can do before the upgrade for each of them. But we have a summit hi recording history available on our website and basically on all LTS versions we have provided similar speeches about the upgrade. So from 4.0 to 5.0 and similar. So probably you should recheck all of those and then continue with this part about upgrading to 6.0. Mm -hmm. So consider all of the changes that have been made in the uh, kind of intermediate versions, uh, do maybe some analysis on the database of, of how long that might take, and then with that in mind, perform the upgrade. Mm -hmm. All right, and that's all. Thank you a lot. I hope uh, it is now clear for everyone how to perform the upgrade, how long it's going to take, and what other kind of precautionary steps we have to make. Thank you. Thank you, Arthur.